Good morning, Alvin Olsen for Sea Do Adventures New Zealand. Well, yesterday I had a small catastrophe out on the water where I lost some of my gear. I lost my rod, my reel, and my rod holder. And I thought I better take stock of what I've got. So I'm in the process of developing a list for my boat so that when I do go out on an adventure, I know what I've got and I've checked it against my base list. So I've had my GTX 155 for approximately six months now. I've accumulated 50 hours of experience on the, on the boat. Initially, I had very little gear, made basically my life jacket and uh, anchors and things like that. But in the last six months, I've accumulated more, gear, more equipment and refined what I need to have with me. So I'm in the process of developing my list so that when I do go out on uh, different adventures, I have at least got a, a range of the tools that are basic to the boat. So I start with my anchor and my anchor rope here. I keep it uh, nice and tidy on there, keep it folded up. I've put it inside my hat there just to stop it flopping around a bit and inside this here. Now that uh, keeps it more secure and save the tangling in the bottom of the, of the uh, cap caboose if you like. I've got a, a longer anchor rope here that I need. Uh, that'll, that'll go down nearly a hundred meters that one there if I need to. And this is, oh that shouldn't be amongst there. This is my um, launching rope here. I can clip that onto the onto the front uh, of the sea do and Throw, push the boat back and then pull it back round and anchor it to the shore while I put the boat trailer away. I, I bought an, a paddle here, an extendable handle, and I found that that's handy sometimes to uh, just to uh, get you into shore. I'm getting more competent at driving the boat now and can put it where I want it, but that, that certainly helped me when I was uh, first learning how to do things. My safety gear now, I've got this uh, Rescue Me personal locator beacon here. Uh, that's all registered to me with my wife on, at home there as the first port of call. I have an emergency flashlight there, strobe light with SOS and all those sort of things on it. These are two uh, VHF radios I have for my van, uh, UHF radios for my van. This is mainly a listening one here that I have if I have the drone so I can hear for helicopters etc. And this is my new VHS radio for uh, calling up Coast Guard. I grabbed three flares when I was in a shop once just uh, as an additional security. They take up no room and they just sit in my caboose there as well. And my fire extinguisher, well, I, I carry it, um, but I doubt that I'll ever use that at sea. I'll just get off the boat and leave it to it. I'll grab Bev's uh, Easy Yo there and I can stack uh, my uh, pair of pliers and a multi-tool multi -tool in that. I carry a pair of pliers out there with me because that, you know, you never know whether you get a hook in you or you get something that you just want to tweak up. This is my hunting knife. I, I carry that all the time with me. It, it'll cut rope pretty flash, that one there. She's good. I had that with me and that goes in this one here, carried in the bag. I have a good set of shades there. They work well for me over there. This bag here, which I pack the fire extinguisher into, is also a sand anchor. I, it's uh, one that I can fill up with sand and tie the boat offshore, so that's important for me. I've got a set of gloves here. I've got also my ne neoprene ones that are away at the present time, but these are handy, more so in the winter than in the summer. My sister just sent me this hat here, and that saves my neck getting burnt when you're... Um, uh, out on the briny there, you, the back of your neck, especially if you've got no hair like myself, you can get burnt easy. I grabbed this face mask here, used it a few times in the winter, you certainly don't need it in the summer. And this buff here works well too, but it's pretty warm one really, it's more for a motorbike one. But uh, I have used it when I was down south on the southern lakes. I have a set of goggles as well, and I carry them, they're getting a bit scratched up and that, but they're doing as my second pair. Uh, my snorkeling gear is uh, just a basic uh, set of fin, fins and uh, snorkels and my weight belt here. I like this one because it's in canvas and it doesn't uh, knock any other parts around. It packs down pretty tight in the front hold. 
I've got a three mil long wetsuit there, long sleeve, long legs, and that, that's excellent in the in the winter, and I use that quite often. That's been my primary one. I grabbed a short sleeve, short uh, leg one for the summer, and I also grabbed this overcoat here. This one goes over everything, so that takes you up to six mils on your body, and that works well too. It's got a hoodie on it and uh, pockets, etc. So I take that in the caboose, so if I do get wet and I've got a fair way to travel I can put that on over the top and that, uh, that keeps the heat inside and uh, that gives me uh, 6 mils of protection on the upper body. I've got a range of life jackets now, some for this, uh, my grandchildren, they can have a ride with me. This blue one here is the one that I use mainly, it is uh, a little tight but it, uh, it, it does the job, I feel, feel comfortable out riding in it and I've got this one here but I prefer my blue one here when I'm uh, out riding so I was looking on trade me and I come across this suit here she's a flotation fish from the North Sea of England there it's a beaut uh, if you get that on there in the cold in the winter it's just excellent and um, I carry some uh, safety gear in the top pocket some hexamine to uh, light fires what else have I got in here? I've got a cigarette lighter there and somewhere else I've got uh, it's got a whistle that's right that's the other thing on this one and here as well this life jacket for bigger people that come for a ride with me these uh, three containers here I can put them in in combinations uh, they'll all fit in the front caboose this one here is deceptive it'll It'll disappear in there, no trouble. And I've still got plenty of room either side there. So that's 20 litres on top of the 60. To do videography on the water is quite awkward, really. You get splashes all over your lenses and uh, the cameras are moving all the time. But I've got these Railblazer mounts here on the back of the uh, Sea-Doo. Uh, I can put my GoPro up on there and that'll give me this perspective of the boat here. I can move that to this side over here and give me that perspective. I've got a mount up here on the front of the uh, jet ski to give me a forward and backward uh, perspective. I put my initial one on the left uh, mirror but my main mount for my GoPro is right here on my face. I, I have it uh, mounted there. I can talk to it, tell it to off and on and I can also put it up on the top there. It's not so uh, responsive on the roof there but certainly down here I can talk to it off on and give it a little bit of a story or an aid memoir for myself as I'm traveling along. I have an extension pole here that I can also put the GoPro up on. That wobbles a bit more but uh, I see um, I can have that right in short if I'm snorkeling or out wide to get some other sweeping sort of shots. My VHF is the most recent ad uh, addition there and I've built this mount here on there so I can hear the radio if she's calling up I can lash it to there as a, a, a thing I can pull it out and talk to it here and what I've also done is put my uh, call signs and emergency stuff here on the inside of the boat ZMX7767 is my call. Anyway, that's where I'm up to about six months into it. Oh, I just looked to my left there and I'm setting up a, a cray pot there uh, ready to go and see if I can catch a crayfish. I've got some I've got some boys there with uh, to mark my markers there. A couple of others there for a little net that I'm going to try and just have a go at. So I've got a fish box coming to go on the back here. It's called a fish cool. Um, a fabricated one with uh, four rod holders on the back, trolling uh, adaptions, uh, live, live fish um, tank on the inside there. So I'll leave that until I, uh, I get that and then I can show you that in more detail. I take my uh, iPhone with me all the time and it sits up in the uh, dry box there so that, that becomes another form of communication when you're close into shore. So um, so that's a, a summary of the accumulated gear that I've got so far. I'd like one of those Danforth uh, sand anchors so that um, uh, it can stop 
and hold me firm in the sand whereas uh, the one that I've got now is more for round rocks and on reefs. So I've got other rods in this bag here along with their reels and things so I'll be able to make something up again to um, replace the one that I lost. I lost one very similar to this here up pen. It was a bloody beaut too. So that's my tackle box there. I've got some ones here for the uh, snapper and gurnard and cod. I tried the long lines and uh, that works okay. But uh, it's the crayfish there that I'm going to have a go at, see if I can get them. That's uh, another uh, adventure I'll have. I put these star ports here on the back of the boat. They, they work very well. You, you, that's the lock mechanism there. That's on and that's off. How I lost my rod yesterday, I had it forward there on this one. back up this way with my rod holder in there just sitting there so it was much easier to uh, to get hold of and when I went to move off I moved it down to the back here sat it in its uh, caboose there but didn't do this final mechanism click like that now that meant that I my rod is down in Davy Jones's locker at the present time with very little chance of getting that back so that's where I'm up to six months into this hobby here it's uh, accumulating things to try and stay safe out on the water.